this is Kite Girl Annabelle Drum and today I have with me Lisa Gibson who is the author of the book Releasing the Chains, Timeless Wisdom on How to Forgive Anyone for Anything, which sounds totally amazing. Hi Lisa. Hi, how are you Annabelle? Very good, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I was having a read through your bio and uh, one of the things that came up for me which I thought was amazing was that you actually got to meet Gaddafi and forgive him. <laughs> That is extraordinary. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's probably the sort of my biggest claim to fame, if you will, um, is my brother was actually killed on a Lockerbie terrorist attack back in 1988. And out of that tragedy, I made a decision that I wanted to find a way not only to forgive, but to really focus on preventing things like terrorism. And so realized that um, when we found out that Gaddafi was responsible, I, I felt like one of the most powerful message I could communicate to the world would be to sit with him and not only tell him that I forgive him and that in my belief love triumphs over hate but but also to send a message around the world that um, that there are people in the world that are choosing to respond differently and no one would have blamed me if I hadn't you know chosen to hold on to this grief and anger but I I really did choose to take a what I consider more of the moral high ground and when I met with him uh, he actually shortly after interviewed with CNN and then the story went around the world. And so in many ways, the power of the story of me meeting with him was more impactful than maybe even my meeting face to face with him and choosing to forgive him is when other people heard about it. Wow. That's, it's an incredible story. Did he understand you or did you have a translator there when you were talking? Yeah, we had a translator and uh, it was translated into Arabic for him. I think he understood English somewhat, but I don't think he was comfortable speaking it. Mm. So they did translate it because there were times where I was speaking and, and I could tell he was understanding me even though I was speaking in English before it was being translated. So I'm, I'm sure he understood at least part of it. Wow. And so what was it that um, inspired you to write this book now? Well, the, this book actually came about uh, after writing my first book, which was a memoir of called Life and Death, A Journey from Terrorism to Triumph. And that book was really my 24-year journey of, of losing my brother in that tragedy and, and, and walking through that season of grief and uh, despair and then moving to this more proactive phase of trying to figure out how to move forward and to heal and also to, to really have justice. And... And it was as I was on this journey that I would be out telling my story in a variety of settings uh, that everyone would ask me, how do you forgive? And so I thought, well, if this is what we're asking for, then this is probably the book I need to write. And so it really is a book that kind of reflects my own process that I walk through in, in trying to, to figure out how to reconcile my desire for justice with a belief that I need to forgive. And what does it look like to walk that out practically? that coupled with about 15 other people's extraordinary stories of forgiveness and and it's it's designed to sort of show you how to forgive and then sort of encourage you uh, from others who have suffered uh, tragedies um, like many others and have been able to walk through it. Mm, mm. And I, I wonder, I mean it's, it's not just people that have terrible tragedies that need to learn to forgive, sometimes it's just the tiniest things that, yeah. that uh, we get into the habit of just taking offense at and um, being outraged and shame on you is the words that always pop out of people's mouths whenever something happens that they disapprove of. Can you, um, do you, do you talk much in the book about what sort of happens if you don't forgive? I do. In fact, that's probably the, the real motivation for forgiving is when you understand that holding on to offense is, is incredibly destructive to us both physically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually, it just, it's, it's uh, there's no value. Um, we think that holding on to grudges is a good thing. In, in many ways, it's almost like we think it's going to bring justice if we hold on to this, but in instead it just causes people to fall into emotional despair and with emotional mental health issues, addictions. I mean, there's tons and tons of problems that come from it. And in, in reality, when people start to recognize that they don't have to carry these hurts and offenses anymore, and they can finally have freedom and peace, it's, it's, it's almost probably one of the most transformational things that they can do. Mm, I agree. And I think um, the holding the grudge thing is something I write a fair bit about as well. And I find, you know, 
whatever it was that you're holding the grudge over, the other person might have just buggered off and had a great old time, <laughs> just perfectly fine. And you're the only one sitting there with a grudge, getting physically sick and screwing up your mind and getting stressed. Yeah, absolutely. That's usually the case is, is this, we think it's a good thing and we think we're hurting them. And then I can't even tell you how many times I encounter people who are holding on to a grudge where the other person doesn't even know yeah. that they're angry at them. They're clueless. <laughs> like they haven't even shared with them. And, and so it's like, who is it really hurt but themselves? So that's where it's so powerful when you, when you choose to walk in the opposite direction. Yes. Yeah. And you have to be so brave, I think, to get that started, though, don't, don't you think? Is it, is it tricky to get that started by yourself? I think it, it requires courage um, to, to really be able to humble yourself and to, to go to someone when they've wronged you or to, to be the one to say you're sorry when you've wronged someone else. I mean, I, I teach conflict resolution all over the world. And in fact, I was you know, teaching it in, in Libya this, this couple weeks ago and, and uh, over the holidays. And it's fascinating to me how often I hear people say that it's, it's weak to forgive. And I think it's the exact opposite. I think it's incredibly um, courageous and requires a tremendous amount of inner strength to be able to do that. But at the same time, it requires humility. And so it's sort of this, this mixed bag. Mm, and I think some people also are worried about forgiving is going to, you know, inspire the other person to do it again as well. Yeah. Mm. I hear that a lot. They think yeah. it's... Forgiveness is license to say what happened to me was, was um, okay. <laughs> yeah. In reality, it's not. It's, it's, uh, I, I talk a lot about the importance of, of uh, when someone's an abusive person is creating boundaries. Um, even if they do so, they're sorry. If they're in a pattern, it's not like, like you're expected to reconcile with everyone who continues to hurt you or abuse you. So it's finding that balance and sometimes having the assistance of a counselor or mediator or someone can help with that process. Yeah, okay. So in the book, you, um, you've you stated that there are six steps to learning forgiveness. What's going to be the most difficult one of those to um, get through? I think the, the most difficult for most people is uh, really the fourth, st fourth step, and that's the confrontation. Uh, because what I found is that really what keeps people holding on to the hurt or the offense is they have a desire for justice. They're waiting for someone to say, I'm sorry, or to repent, or to, to make it known that what they did was wrong. And in reality, uh, that often will not happen unless someone is confronted. And, let, and if you let them know, listen, I want you to know what you did hurt me, or it was disrespectful. And to do it in gentleness and um, sort of assuming the best intentions, because often we assume intent with uh, people when they, they may hurt us and they didn't even know or, or it wasn't intentional. And so it's almost giving people the benefit of the doubt that maybe they didn't intend it, but that they did hurt you. So they can say they're sorry and, that, and then you can hopefully then finally forgive and move forward. But it's difficult. It, it is not easy. Yeah. And in situations where, where people are either unavailable or unsafe. And so um, in those situations, confrontation isn't always appropriate. But in those situations where someone is willing, at least, you can sometimes bring another person to the table like a mediator to help balance the, the power imbalance, hopefully, and, and let each other hear one another so maybe there can be some level of repentance on both sides. Mm, mm. That's, a, that's a very interesting step. It's going to be a... I know that's the one that's always trickiest for me as well as the confronting side of things because you do feel so weak you hurt me you know and, and <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like such a wimpy thing to do but in fact um, I understand that the having the honesty around that can make a big difference and especially I think when you when you have to go and talk to somebody who is a naturally a very strong or dominating kind of person that that's really hard to do. But I mean, I, I think from my, my studies over the last few years, I've noticed that the people that are the most pushing and dominating are really the ones that are the least secure anyway, that um, you, actually throwing all your cards out on the table and saying, well, look, here it is. Uh, it, it's quite surprising to them because nobody does it. And um, you can get some interesting results out of it. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's not always a, a positive result, <laughs> unfortunately. But, In the long run, it can be, though. You know, it can be. Can, and, and, yeah. yeah, dialogue, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Com conversation and communication is essential to this. Yeah. What do you think about asking it through an email rather than a face-to-face? 
You know, it's interesting. Um, I, recently, I was doing a training, and, and I was asking them what's their preferred way of dealing with conflict, and they said posting on Facebook. <laughs> so oh. they, they want to get really public about it. They don't want to have a face-to-face -face conversation. They just want to put it on Facebook. So email on Facebook probably isn't the best <laughs> method or form of trying to resolve conflict, uh, but... The reason is, is because if if I was to to repent or say I'm sorry to you or someone who I've wronged, are they going to really believe me if they can't see my face, they can't see my body language, especially if we have a long history maybe of of um, strife or or bad relations? I, I think in some ways that there's a power in in seeing their face and reading their language, their body language to know if they're really being honest and truthful. And I think that's an important part of it. Sounds great. So this book sounds completely amazing. Where do we get hold of it now? Because it's just been released, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's available now on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And uh, you can also find out more information on my website at releasingthechains.com. Okay. And, and I heard that you've got some really special deals as well. I've included for myself a couple of free tracks from my new album coming up. So um, where can they get all those special deals? Where do they buy the book? Yeah, they can get the, the, the deals at Amazon, and then the actual bonuses are going to be available at releasingthechainspromo.com. Okay. So they'll be available tomorrow uh, to get those for, for people and um, take advantage of those, probably $1,000 worth of bonuses that they can wow. take advantage of. Fantastic. Not bad for a little book <laughs> to yeah, add on to the absolutely. book. Absolutely. Yeah. So I will add the links, everybody, uh, into just below the video so that you can find that nice and easy again. Um, is there anything extra that you want to add to this conversation, Lisa, before we go? No, I just appreciate the opportunity and um, thanks so much for partnering with me and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking advantage of your bonuses as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to be able to offer them and I really wish you the best of luck with the book uh, that's Thank releasing you. the chains, everybody. Make sure that you go and grab a copy as soon as you can because those specials are going to have a limited time on them as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lisa. Thank you. All right, see you. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy this interview? Like it, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more great interviews.